Today, we are going to cartoonify our game assets. Take your textures from this to this through an easy to follow workflow. I'm going to break down every step of the process from modeling to outlining to texturing and finally importing our asset into the Godot game engine. To get us started, the modeling is super straightforward. We want to start with a cylinder and give it 12 faces. Make it a little taller and apply rotation and scale. We can go ahead and give it a couple of loop cuts just like this. We can bevel the two middle cuts with two extra edges. Then we want to take these faces and scale them along the X and the Y axes. We want to grab the top and bottom faces, extrude and scale these along the X and Y axis also. And lastly, we want to inset the top face just a little bit and extrude this down. This is a quick and easy low poly barrel and we can move on to creating ourselves some cartoony outlines. So creating outlines for our game assets is a bit of a multi-step process. We can outline our edges inside of Blender quite easily, but if you're trying to achieve a cell shaded style where you have a consistent outline around your entire object, it is possible to create this inside of Blender, but this won't transfer over to a game engine. In order to create this effect in your game engine, you must create shaders. One way to easily achieve this though is through an inverse hull method. For the best results, it'll usually require a combination of different methods and an understanding of shaders. Maybe this topic is worth researching and making a video on in the future if there is enough interest around it. But back to outlining our barrel. The first thing we want to do is create a copy of our barrel and put it off to the side. For organization and readability, we are going to rename one high poly barrel and the other low poly barrel. Select our high poly barrel and create a new material for it. Let's name the material Outline Shader. There are two nodes that we want to bring in, a geometry node and a color ramp. We want to connect the pointiness into the color ramp and the color ramp into the surface of the material output. We want to set our color ramp to constant and set the position of our white color stop to 0.505. The pointiness is essentially going to grab our edges while the color ramp is going to translate that information into black and white. To be able to view our material properly, we have to use cycles render mode and be in the rendered preview. Now, it isn't doing the greatest job just yet, but that will be fixed in the next step. Now, sculpting can be a little bit intimidating if you've never done it before, but trust me, this requires zero skill. With our high poly barrel selected, we are going to go into the sculpting tab and isolate our object with forward slash. We're going to press R on our keyboard and drag our mouse across until we hit 0.01. Simply left click and now we can press Ctrl plus R to remesh our model to the value that we've just set. If we go into edit mode, you will see that we have remeshed our model quite significantly, but we need a dense topology in order to sculpt. Now, if we go into render preview, we can see that our outline shader is starting to take effect and it is properly outlining our edges. Now, if you want something just like this, you can skip to the next step, but if you're looking to take this a little bit further, there are four sculpting brushes that we can use. Number one is clay strips. Then we have the crease sharp, then the scrape brush, and the smooth. You can find them in this toolbar and add them to shortcuts. You can set them to one, two, three, and four. Now pressing each shortcut will select the respective brush that you've set it to. If you're using a mouse, play around with the brush quickly and set the strength to something that isn't too strong. 0.5 to 0.6 is generally a good start. Resize the brush by pressing F and dragging your mouse in and out and left clicking to lock it in. We want something pretty small for this, so a radius of about 10 pixels should be sufficient. Now, our brush will either be set to add or subtract. We can use the inverse of whichever is selected by holding control while sculpting with this brush. We basically want to go around the barrel and start randomly brushing around sections with our crease sharp and our clay strips brush. Get a feel for the brushes and just lay down some random lines jumping between rendered and solid view to see how it's looking. Use the smooth and scrape brushes to thicken or remove some hard edges. This can be a little bit tricky, but again, play around with it to get a feel for it. Basically, what is happening is our outline shader is going to detect any hard edges and sharp corners, then it will assign a value of black and white respectively. So you wanna run around it with a crease sharp and clay strips brush to create some edges for our shader to detect and turn white and you want to scrape and smooth sections to thicken up some lines or completely erase some sections to add some variety. The trick is to not go too overboard. We want to give our barrel a bit of character, but not to overwhelm it. When working with props and general background objects, sometimes more is less. We don't want to paint the entire picture with just one asset. We want to leave some artistic and visual space for everything to work together in order to build our world. 
Once you have something that you're happy with, we can move on to baking our outline mat to use on our low poly barrel. First things first, we need to UV unwrap our low poly model. So head over to the UV editing screen, select our low poly barrel, tap into edit mode, select all, press U and hit smart UV select. Change the island margin to 0.003 to give it some space between the UV islands and hit unwrap. Is this the best way to unwrap? No, but for simplicity's sake of this video, it gets the job done. Now, with our low poly model unwrapped, we need to drag our low poly model to sit over our high poly model. From here, we want to create a new material for the low poly model, name it barrel, because this is going to be the material for our barrel. Now, add an image texture node, create an image 2048 by 2048, name it outline map and set it to non-color. Head over to the render settings, make sure we're in cycles render mode with GPU compute selected. If you have a slower graphics card, change your max samples to something like 10. Scroll down to bake, change the bake type to emit. Because we are not connected to a principal BSDF shader, we are simply emitting our material onto our object. With that done, we want to check selected to active and set the extrusion to 0.5. From here, we want to select our image texture node, select our high poly model, and lastly shift to select our low poly model. We want to make sure that we do it in this order because we are baking the selected object to the active object. Hit bake, save your baked image, and now connect that image texture node into our principal BSDF. So now that we have our outline baked out, we can go ahead and add a math node and drop it in after the image texture node. We'll set that to less than, and that's going to harden up the edges of our outline. We want to use this outline texture as a mask. So if we add a mixed color node and plug our outline into the factor, we can change the A channel to black and we can start adding textures to the white sections of our barrel. To get a nice cartoony gradient texture, we are going to bring in a gradient texture node and plug that into the B channel with a color ramp between it. We can set our color ramp to constant, add a mapping and texture coordinate node, rotate our gradient along the Y axis by 90 degrees, and now we can see our gradient. If we move the white color stop across, it's going to lower the gradient towards the bottom of the barrel. To add some waviness to it, we simply want to bring in a noise texture node, add a texture coordinate and a mapping node to the end with the texture coordinate set to object. Connect these to a color ramp, mix these two textures together like this. Now, if we drag the factor all the way to one and start bringing it down just a little bit, you will see our noise texture is affecting our gradient. If we set the scale to 2 on the noise texture node and bring the white color stop over a bit, you will see that it starts to give it a bit more of an exaggerated cartoony look. We can turn the roughness value up to 1 and the IOR down to 0 to help sell that cartoony look further, but this isn't as important in Blender because we'll be tweaking these values inside of Godot. The last and final step inside of Blender is to bake out our models so that we can bring this over to Godot. Now, this is a simple process as we'll only be baking out the color map. We need to add an image texture node to our material, create new, set it to 2048 by 2048, and name it barrel color map. We go back into render properties, change the bake type to diffuse, make sure our direct and indirect lighting is disabled, and we want to uncheck selected to active. Now, with our barrel and color map image texture node selected, we can hit bake. Once that's done, save the image to your computer and connect the image to your principal BSDF. Before exporting, make sure that our origin point is set to an appropriate location. I tend to keep mine at the base of my objects as it makes it easier to snap to grid inside of our game engine. And we can now export this as a GLTF file, making sure to have selected objects enabled so we only export the objects that we have selected. Now that we've exported our barrel, we can head over to Godot and simply drag and drop the GLTF file into the engine and bring this into the scene. Now, my Godot skills are pretty basic, so don't judge me if this method I'm about to do isn't the most effective way of doing it, but you can simply override the existing material with the material that we've baked out. Right-click on our barrel and check Editable Children. Then we want to select our mesh, override the existing material with our color map, come down to Shading, switch the Specular and the Fuse Mode to Tune. Lastly, under Roughness, change this to zero. If you want to take this a step further, select our mesh and you can create an object outline by hitting the mesh tab and selecting create outline mesh. Set the outline mesh to something suitable and we can rename the outline accordingly. Override this material and change the out to black. 
Now, as a side note, there are better ways to get a mesh outline that are going to look a lot better depending on the art style that you're going for. But these methods require writing or implementing shaders, which is not something that I have a lot of experience in. It is something super interesting and I would love to learn it eventually and maybe make a video on creating shaders in Godot, but we'll see. But there you have it. We've gone through every step of creating our cartoon barrel. This workflow can easily be applied to other game assets. You just have to follow these same steps. But the best start and most growth is really going to come from experimentation. Take what you've learned from this video and simply just mess around with it. Try new things, combine this with other methods that you've learned and you will gain a much deeper understanding of 3D art. But that pretty much wraps up this video. I just want to quickly mention I've hit 100 subs, so go me. I'm glad you guys are finding my content helpful and enjoyable. It's super awesome that I've hit this little milestone. So thank you guys so much. Keep learning and subscribe for more.